Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle Barra. I've been a personal stylist for 25 years. Now I help people like you build capsule wardrobes that mix and match easily. Now I'm going through a bit of a theme at the moment. A couple of my videos I wanted to make based on the summer season because it's summer season at the moment in the Northern Hemisphere. So I wanted to create a few videos to help you with that season if you're visiting us or if you're kind of you live in that kind of climate. So today is a really important one for me to do. Now I wanted to talk to you about what I pack for seven days to go away in Europe and I also wanted to talk to you about a lot of the misconceptions that I see, I've seen a lot of it as well, about what you can and can't wear in Europe. I am going to talk to you about the climates, I am going to talk to you about the cultures, I am also going to talk to you about what will make you stand out and look like a tourist. So let's get started. Okay, so before we go on, I lived in London for 10 years and I have traveled right across Europe and some of the biggest mistakes I see people making and when, when, when I see these videos as well, I see a lot of videos made about what you mustn't wear in Europe and what you can wear in Europe and I have to tell you the vast majority of it is absolute rubbish. Now I do have some genuine tips for you though. Okay, one of the first things that I would suggest you don't do if you come to Europe, and particularly I used to see it all the time in London, was I'd see these people, I worked, I used to work and I went to university around Oxford Street in London, which is a very big tourist de destination, and I used to see coach loads of people, and they would have those plastic throwaway kind of rain cut poncho things in August, it would be, you know, like 28, 29, 30 degrees and they'd be stood there in one of these poncho things expecting it to bucket down with rain at any moment. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't rain here, this year's been particularly bad, but <clears throat> the best advice I could give you is look at what it was doing the week before. So look at the weather in that area where you're going the week before and use that as a guideline of what you bring. But believe me, if you wear one of those throwaway ponchos in Europe, particularly in London, you will look like a tourist. And the next thing that I'll say as well is what I know in the US you call fanny packs, we call bum bags. Now, unless you're in that kind of quirky 1980s revival thing, which is kind of coming back, which you absolutely can do if that's your thing, go for it. It does also scream tourist. Now, there's this big thing as well. There's something else I need to say about this. There's this massive fear that I see put out frequently about pickpockets in Europe. Now, I'm 51, I'm 52 in two months. I've never been pickpocketed anywhere in Europe. I have taken my daughter to over 26 countries, a lot of them have been in Europe, and I've never been pickpocketed. Now, all I can say to you is, I'm not saying it doesn't happen because I know it does happen, but one thing I would say is don't look like a tourist in the first instance. So don't kind of wear these plastic Mac things or, and uh, the, the fanny packs, like I say, I think they also make you look like a tourist. And um, just be aware in crowded areas that are very tourist heavy, so that is that might be the reason why in some instances I haven't had those experiences, but then I've done the whole Eiffel Tower thing and everything myself as well, and I've never had any issues. I usually just carry a backpack or a rucksack, and when I'm in an area where I know it's crowded, and I know stuff like that can happen, usually in cities, it has to say, in tourist attraction areas, I will just pull my bag around and have it towards my front. That's all I do. That is it. It's as simple as that. Now, I am not saying nothing will ever happen to you, but what I am saying is sometimes I think there is a lot of scaremongering and I think it's not as bad as what anybody else thinks. And again, like I said, I lived in London for 10 years. I never had that issue, ever. I never had that issue. But you can do something so that you don't look so much like a tourist. And I think those plastic kind of Mac things, I also think the bum bags don't help you as well. Next thing I want to say, before I even go on to what I would pack, is think about the country, the culture, and like the climate, the time of season, all those things before you go. 
Now, another thing that I see happen frequently, which is insulting, hugely insulting generally to Europeans, is when people kind of treat it and they look at it like it's one big country and it really isn't. It really isn't. So my biggest advice to you is look at what country you're going to and sometimes even what part of that country you're going to. So, you know, so like the south of France can be very different to the north of France, for example, in terms of temperature. So and different parts of France can be very different. Different parts of the UK can be very different. So think about where you're going, you know, and if you are coming to London, make sure it is actually London you are going to because I see as well um, a lot of, of, um, information out there where they say oh you know I'm visiting London there's gonna be loads of pickpockets and actually they're out in Reading or there there's somewhere that isn't London at all so research where you're going research the time uh, the season and the country you're visiting as well and respect that country now there are a few countries mainly more towards the east of Europe that are a little bit more conservative and I would think carefully about that in what you dress maybe just a little bit more conservative maybe in certain areas so that's just a general bit of advice really wherever you're traveling wherever in the world think about the climate Think about the country you're visiting. Think about being respectful in that country that you're visiting as well. And that applies to every country in Europe as well. So, yeah, don't go for the plastic throwaway, Max. Avoid the um, uh, fanny packs or bum bags and research where you're going. Look at the weather the week before and base what you pack on that. And I know there is an element as well that if you live in a much warmer climate and maybe you come to the UK or maybe you go to northern France or something like that and let's say you come from the tropics, it will probably feel different and it will probably feel cooler. But look at what temperature it is and actually adapt your wardrobe to that temperature. So today I'm going to show you what I would pack as a European stylist for seven days in Europe. So let's get started. Now I usually like to pack just with carry-on. I very, very rarely take any carriage baggage with me at all. So this is based on carry-on. So the first thing that I would suggest is three pairs of shoes. I don't really do heels. The most I would do is wedges. So I might have one pair of wedges. I might have a pair of flat sandals like a pair of Birkenstocks and a pair of trainers. Now the reason why I say this is because it means my feet are covered up if I need to go somewhere where my toes need to be covered up but my feet will also be comfortable. I expect to do a lot of walking because I don't like just sitting by the pool every single day, maybe the odd day but not every day and uh, my Birkenstocks would also serve the same purpose whereas um, a pair of wedges for me is something for a little bit more dressed up. So that's the First thing, I'd have three pairs of shoes. Next up, one of the things that I really would suggest you bring is maybe a steamer. I would probably take a handheld steamer and my adapters so that I love my linen and I love my silk, but they're not great in suitcases. So a little handheld steamer would fit in my case quite nicely. It means I can roll them up and actually have something that looks a little bit more sophisticated for maybe an evening or an occasion where I maybe I'm uh, visiting a more kind of uh, sophisticated restaurant or something like that. I take two dresses or jumpsuits. I actually love jumpsuits. I know not everybody loves them. But again, I think this is really easy because you don't have to think about what you're going to match it with. It's the whole outfit, basically. So a tea dress always works really well for me. I like them because they're quite flowy. They only come in under here, so they're away from the body. So if I'm in a hot climate, it feels quite nice on my skin. Plus, they're really good for being dressed up or down. And the same goes for a smartish casual jumpsuit as well. So I definitely pack a couple of dresses or a couple of jumpsuits or vice versa with both. I'd also pack a light jacket. Now sometimes I'll actually wear this when I'm flying over. So either usually I would pack either a linen uh, blazer or a cotton blazer or a leather jacket, a lightweight leather jacket or a denim jacket. Something that's kind of 
quite casual but can kind of be dressed up a little bit so maybe it's the blazer for you but I still think I'd probably just go for my little biker leather jacket. I'd also pack three shirts or t-shirts rather t-shirts or vests or maybe a combination of the above I'd pick probably quite neutral colors like white charcoal gray black maybe striped one um, in a, something that can be rolled up really nicely and really easily as well and that would kind of combine with most of the other things in my wardrobe in addition I'd probably have a long sleeved button up or button down shirt probably in white or maybe a slightly paler colour. I've got a silk one that I really like and I probably take that, then I can wear that with my linen pants and I can wear it with my jeans as well. I pack a pair of jeans as well. I always go for the standard straight leg or wide leg jean. I love these ones with my turn ups. I wear them all the time. I know they're not for everybody, but just a standard pair of straight leg jeans, you know, either in, even in like a dark denim or in a white can look quite sophisticated as well. And that would work really well with your silk, silk tops or it'd work really well with t-shirts as well. And last but not least, I pack a sun hat. I really like my fedora style hats. Uh, I don't know why I've always worn them. It could be for you. It's just a sun visor. It could be a cap, whatever kind of works best for you. But I do like to protect the top of my head, particularly when it gets really hot. And finally, I'd have one larger rucksack or back backpack for me to take out and then something smaller that I can just have as like something to just keep my money and maybe my phone in and I can have here. So I hope you found that helpful. Like, subscribe, tell your friends and let me know in the comments what your favourite tips are for visiting Europe and if you've even been and if you are coming let me know as well I'd love to hear from you I'd love to hear what you think as well so my top tips just to reiterate are research which country you're going to what time of year it's going to be think about the sites you're visiting as well if it's a religious site or it's something that's very important to that country respect where it is respect the people there and kind of respect the dress code as well but beyond that when someone says to you, you can't wear jeans in Europe or you can't wear sweatpants in Europe, it is absolute rubbish. It is that bad, it is laughable. So pack really carefully, think about how you can combine those outfits in the best way and most of all, have fun. I'll see you next time. Take care, bye.